if we are facing the challenges that we will be looking to discuss here. So to start with, uh, as the topic of the discussion is uh, face of tomorrow, the digitization. And I can see most of the people uh, having uh, running their mobile phone and laptop in their hand. And I will definitely say that uh, digitization is no more the face of tomorrow, rather it is the face of today. Until somebody built that mobile is no more digital. Yeah. So, <coughs> nevertheless, in banking, we are yet to reach the digital summit and the way forward that we are going to discuss today. Uh, by the word from a uh, famous writer, Britti, uh, there is a famous word called democratization of banking. And he, through his book, from bank 2.0, 3.0, 4.0, .0, all the dot zero, the most of the time he spells that digitization is actually the uh, democratization of banking through the uh, through availing to the people uh, access to the finance. But uh, in our context, we are still dictating the uh, banking, not democratizing. In most of the cases, like uh, we do a lot of ads about our banking products. And we want to, uh, we don't uh, give a democratic uh, experience to them for doing onboarding with their son. Rather, what we dictate is come to our branch, sign some awesome forms for five pages, and start doing banking to us. We, are, uh, we again do some awesome marketing of mobile banking, which is again the digital next uh, for banking, yes. For other uh, verticals, it is already there. And, and again, we, what we do is, this is our mobile banking, we want to, do, uh, we want to give you a lot of experience on that, that is why we, what, what we did in our advertisement. And again, we ask people to come to our branch to sign. See, uh, that is what the uh, thing is. But it's not that much of uh, uh, tedious for the uh, customer to get signed in. However, uh, we'll be seeing a lot of uh, digital faces in coming days, that is for so sure. Like people moving into the self-service self -service channels, uh, be payment in the center, and mobile being the uh, most dominating channel. <laughs> With that, we are expecting a lot digital marketing uh, also, uh, but again with a lot of excuses on that, like uh, I'd like to share one experience on it. Somebody was sharing uh, in Facebook that they have a wonderful product, new product, new NFT product. But again, when I tap into that advertisement, they asked me to sign up in Facebook itself. And when I signed it, it did took me to some, uh, did take me to some good page where I can uh, immediately onboard into a FD account. However, it uh, said, it gave me a notification uh, that, okay, our call center agent will call me, call you to uh, start your processing. So that sort of thing that we are currently realizing, but again, we are halfway there. We have already started digital marketing. We have already started talking about digital. Uh, the best thing that is happening in digital banking fraternity is we have, uh, most of the banks have, uh, I'm sure most of not, all the banks have the digital banking de department and recently been headed by the business expert rather than previously when it was uh, headed by IT uh, department heads. So we are in the right track. With that, uh, uh, with that, and again, uh, uh, the payment industry moving up with uh, the, uh, the lot of payment aggregators coming into place with the such a great success of uh, NCHR and phone pay with the, the, the tremendous proposition of QR into the market and other payment industry, uh, other payment components being added to the regular mobile and internet banking payments. I would like to uh, go straight to our panel member instead of talking a lot about payment. And to, I'd like to ask Mr. Sunil Pokhel uh, about how do you see in Nepal the payment landscape, especially in terms of your uh, the, the international experience that you have. How do you see it in Nepal? But I've been in banking for a long time, nevertheless. 
based on the discussion that we are having today, what I can see, two things. I think we are at crossroads. Which model would like to opt for? Whether you like to go to Indian model or you like to go to Chinese model. Why I'm saying so? What happened in the India, if you look at the India, is in November 2016, that changed the game. All of a sudden, these Ptm guys were partying somewhere in Delhi. They started getting a call at 8 pm, and everything changed. This company became like a billion dollar company overnight. That's how it changed. But if you go to China, China is an entirely different ballgame. So, we are not sure from Nepal's market per se whether we would like to go to this side or the other side. My experience in Myanmar, Myanmar decided to go in a Chinese way. They started their QR code payments 2014. In fact, now we have like, too many wallets. I think it's 8 or 10 wallets. All the banks are having wallets. You'll be surprised. Country like Myanmar. Now the central bank has every us they have to stop issuing any QR code for the merchant because they are going for the unified QR code. Which means Singapore is the only country in the world as of now to have unified QR code for the merchant. Perhaps Myanmar is going to be second country. Then definitely China is actually in the part lines. They are also coming up with the unified QR codes. So they are looking for different directions. So a country like Nepal has to go through this QR code thing or whatever it is, wallet. Perhaps we also need to unify the United States. So I think from that perspective, the cost per transit is pretty low. And the cost, the customer onboarding, yes, transformation is a big challenge. Unless government will come with like the demonetization like in India, then the transfer will happen from that point of view. Otherwise, it will take some time. Even for the early pay, it took almost eight years. The transfer happens now, they have a customer base of almost 600 million customers. And that's the data of 2017 or 18. Now perhaps it's only 700 million. So they have changed the game. And I'll also give you an example on SME in a country like uh, Myanmar, you'll go and find how this digital platform is helping for SMEs. They have recently, two months back, they launched a website, okay, and with some apps. Now, if you are going to supply any goods to any multinational company, you can put your invoice for options. And that's a peer, peer to peer lending. But this company, what they did is they have tied with all the big corporates. They should you supply your goods, put your things on options. And people like <coughs> you start bidding for that. And depending on the company that you're going to receive the money. And all the money comes to the digital channels. I don't have to do anything. And I'm going to get more returns. So they are moving in a different direction. That's that's for sure. And whether we know or not, like in SME segment, in loan segments, uh, for Alipay, SME models, they have got 310. They use a term called 310. If you want to apply for loans, it's going to take you three minutes to apply for the loans. One second to approve the loans. Zero means no human interface. That is possible. That is very much possible. I'm not saying we are to, we are happy with that model, but the future is there. So I think we are at the crossroad again. We have to decide whether we like to go with this model or centralized database and you'll do something, or you like to do something different. Painted in the market, increase the number of conversions. Then you are going to change the this payment landscape because digital banking. <coughs> It's not all about digital banking, we're talking about the payments only here. So digital banking is a different ballgame, this is nothing to do with this part of only it's we're talking about the payments here. Thank you, Shimon, sir. Uh, again, uh, with the digital thing coming into the first, that is the term, the buzzword is there, digital first. Uh, I would like to ask uh, Mr. Niraj Kandel on how do you see the, the digital first strategy coming into uh, financial technology, right? on the insurance industry also, as well as in the other financial industry. How do you see that? Thank you, Prabhu. Uh, to, to start with, I would thank Andy also for giving me this opportunity. I think uh, before we talk about digitization, I think the most important factor we is we are shifting from product to experience centric, and that's where everything lies in. 
Uh, I think we started uh, mainframe era with 1952 when the first account number was developed, right? And then we went on to self-service era where we have ATM machines and all those things. Now we're moving into experience era. So what kind of models that we're going to follow, what kind of digitization that we want in our country is finally dependent on the experience of the client. What kind of experience that you want to give to your client? That's just one of the panelists just mentioned the fact that Alipi is disrupting the overall China market, right? Nepal also has some software doing so many things. Now, uh, basically if you talk about banks, there are three values that banks cater to customers. One is the ability to make payments, that is number one, and the ability to store value whether you want to have fixed deposit or savings deposits, and the ability to have a credit facility. And if you can have these facilities from non-banking channels, and typically these companies are also doing banking, that's what it is. Now the face of banking is coming in. Paul also mentioned the fact that in bank for big team, how he has simplified the face of banking changing in coming uh, decade. That's very true that he's mentioned how the innovation model is killing our banking industry. Now we talk about the digitization, but what we are doing basically is we are copying and pasting the forms in electronic forms and we are asking our clients to filter. So I, th I think that is not true digitization. We are not thinking from the first principle design. According to first principle design, for example, if you have to make the entire banking system today, whether you make the banking system that we have at this point in time, where you have to fill up 10 different forms, KYC and all those things, or you want to start from scratch and you want to make it complete digital. So I think the most important factor before we talk about digitization is experience that I want to have. I want to have experience that from one single platform, I want to meet all economic cycle or the life cycle need that I have. So for example, if I have an application and uh, so probably I want to go for a movie, I want to pay ticket from that application, I want to buy mutual funds, I want to use the same platform to buy mutual funds. Probably I want to have doctor's appointment. I want to use the same platforms uh, to have my uh, need. So we're not only talking about banking products now. It is integrated now. And the uh, open banking concept has come where a lot of APIs, APIs have been shared into multiple channels, fintechs and all those banks so that when you get into one platform, you don't need to hop around in different, different platforms. So the future of bank, if you ask me, I think in Nepal, uh, we need to see the behaviors, how the behaviors is changing. We see that millennials are generally coming and they are, they are capturing a lot of wealth, right? As for one of the researches from Ford, uh, Forbes magazine, by 2025, 75% of the people will be millennials and most of the wealth will be accumulated by millennials. So how we can keep it to millennials? What kind of behaviors they are demonstrating? So strategies should be around customers' behavior rather than what kind of model or what kind of uh, digitization you know, process that we want to we want to have in the market. Thank you. Right. right. So, uh, his more uh, concern is on, on the experience side of digitization. So, on the same hand, talking, speaking with the digital first strategy for the banks in Nepal, uh, uh, I want to ask Subhra uh, Padhe uh, on on this. Are the banks getting it right? Uh, is the only uh, payment or the customer part of it or the customer experience is the only way uh, to digitize? the entire working of the bank or there are other components that is being skipped by the banks these days. How do you see it? Thank you, Pradeep. Uh, thank you, India, for this. Uh, first, uh, I just want to start with uh, something else rather than the question. Uh, digitization is uh, the two things, two areas like which we have to look into. Like, uh, first, it's a cultural shift for any organization. Like they have to move from uh, the uh, entire processes has to be Move from the pen and paper to the digital platforms. The other is the uh, the customers in the group, where your customers will be uh, available. Uh, your services will be available. Your customers can have your services uh, when and where they require. So not only the payments area, uh, the other areas in the banking, uh, like your back office, uh, your uh, loan processing, uh, loan management, your disbursement process. These areas also need to be looking. Like what we can see is that the other areas, uh, the payments are the initial, uh, uh, like what I saw in the Alan's uh, presentation, that the front face is one area where you can digitize. But uh, uh, we see lots of bank having, uh, even in Nepal, like you have an online application forms, but eventually the application forms fills, uh, falls into the hands of a human where the next processes are carried out. 
So not only the payments, uh, I think the uh, backbone which I turn as when I talk to my colleagues in the my own idea. Before you move into the customer centric process, it's better you first digitize the internal process. Then only uh, you can have a seamless effect of digitization later on. Thank you. Uh, yeah, this is absolutely correct. I guess most of the banks these days are looking for automating their back offices, their relationship management approach and all. Because you can see a lot of RFPs floating in the newspaper about asking for CRM, a business process management system, business intelligence system and all that. So we, we are expecting the internal processes entire digitized incoming as a phase of tomorrow for the Maple Leaf Banking fraternity. Uh, again, Again, the digitization, as we spoke a lot, is a huge, uh, it backed by a huge challenges, you know, like uh, investment and maybe regulations, maybe adaptability by uh, customers as well as the internal uh, the employees as well. So, I would like to ask on that note to uh, Mr. Pikram Shreshtan, how do you see the digitization in banking? How do you find the challenges? What, how do you, uh, you know, what do you think uh, should a banker in this day should do to Thank you. Uh, first of all, uh, I want to uh, express I have been working in bank uh, from last 15 years and uh, now I'm heading digital banking department. And most challenges face I am uh, from last 15 years in digitization is uh, one of the uh, uh, awareness and capacity building is most important in, uh, in banking sectors. And nowadays, you know, uh, even though we introduce uh, new uh, product in uh, bank, then the most challenging thing is, you know, uh, to build and to avail uh, the users uh, within a bank uh, for employees and with, uh, for, the, uh, for the customer also. Uh, most uh, challenging thing is, uh, First, adapting uh, technology uh, within a uh, within a bank first. Uh, I used to say that uh, the staff is uh, our uh, ambassador for the uh, uh, bank, and uh, first first of all, the staff should uh, have uh, complete knowledge on the product. So, uh, uh, first of all, uh, we face the challenge within the bank itself, uh, and second, for the customer for the, uh, the user's perspective. It's more challenging because, you know, uh, the internet and the connectivity is more, uh, access to finance is more, uh, moreover, uh, in Nepal is very less uh, compared to others. So I face uh, this kind of challenges in the Definitely, the challenges are always there. Uh, I want to share an experience of our own uh, on this, because the, uh, the experience of, uh, on, in terms of the, uses by employee, how does it impact the entire digital experience of a customer or the digital proposition of a bank. Uh, we were assessing the number of uh, card uses uh, per customer for a particular branch. And what we found was, out of 15-20 that we sampled, one branch was selling less than 5% of card vis-a-vis um, -vis the number of accounts that they onboarded. And when we assess the employee on, on the part, we went into each of the employee uh, to see how their digital experience, uh, how they are using the digital channel. And what we found out, found was, out of 11, 12 employees, only two were in the social media. See the difference. Only two were in the social media. Five were not using the bank's own mobile banking service. Seven were not using the card itself of the bank. And we suddenly realized that this was the challenge that the bank branch was facing. The employees were not much aware about the facility that the bank is providing to this, their mobile proposition or the card proposition. So they were not be able to uh, propose the same to the customer or transfer the same, same knowledge to the customer. That's why their uh, overall uh, performance on the transaction or sales through a digital channel was low. So it starts from the home, with, uh, the normal word you use for that. So, uh, that is what the challenge, one of the critical challenges is. So, uh, again, we come back to our discussion topic. Um, the next topic that I want to uh, address here 
is the, the buzzword again, the collaboration with fintech, the partnership with fintech. How should the bank uh, in Nepal go for it? How should we impress the fintech that are currently operating in Nepal? Uh, we can see few, very few wallet companies. Uh, one of the best fintechs uh, uh, are also the best uh, competitor in another product segment for the banks. Uh, and few fintech companies are trying to collaborate with you with the direct proposition of cannibalizing your own product. So there are certain scenarios. For example, one fintech yeah. visited few banks asking to integrate their mobile uh, mobile wallet um, into their core banking system directly. They, yes, for payment that was okay. But again they were also asking them uh, for the balance uh, inquiry API and statement so uh, uh, statement API also. Directly can, trying to cannibalize their own mobile banking proposition. From my standpoint, there might be a different standpoint on that. So, was it a collaboration? Uh, was that collaboration going to like, go for a long, la long lasting? Or that, that, talks, that sort of collaboration should exist in a uh, digital aggressive market? How do, uh, how do we uh, should go about it? Uh, I want to ask uh, Sunil sir on that again on the relationship between banks and fintech and again fintech versus fintech on the same. How do you see in your experience? Okay, on fintech side, I totally believe, I strongly believe rather, the bank should be doing the banking. Bank cannot be your tech company. There's no question on that. Yes, the bank can put their money as equity in the fintechs. Like most of the bank in the West, they have already started doing that. But uh, big bank like Citibank, they have uh, fintech companies. Now there are a lot of banks that are putting their money. And they're putting that money for reasons, naturally. Because the bank should be doing the banking, the fintech should be doing their things. They're, they're, they're going to provide you some solutions. And there's an opportunity for both. It's not like banks and fintech are two different things. I'll, I'll go back to China. I'm, I'm not that influenced from Chinese, but I'll go back to China. I'll give you an example by China because I've been interacting with these Alipay guys. So I know better Alipay guys. And their model is very simple. They are collaborating with all the banks in China. You cannot have Alipay accounts without any Chinese bank accounts. Very simple. So it means it all depends on the banks, how they want to collaborate. Now, even they are coming up with unified QR codes in China with the help of the banks. So in Nepalese context also, because I don't if you honestly if you ask me, look at the population size of population. First, my question is, do we need any fintech companies? These are the very simple solutions if we have, perhaps a bank can also run on those solutions. Whatever wallet we, we talk about, perhaps we'll have maximum wallet user is less than 10 million users. We're not looking at like 500 to 600 million users. So 10 million users, we can have a different companies can be run. Why do you have to do three different companies doing the same things? Yes, if something to do with the revenues, <coughs> this is the we have to have clearly defined lines saying that this is the for the fintech, where they will provide the solution, and this is the banking, let the bank do the banking things. Then you won't have any issues and both the parties will have all new situations. This is what I feel. Thank you, Sudhir Sudhir insightful uh, on the insightful answer on that. Uh, again, going back to the fintech, what we have so far seen is uh, we have only seen fintechs operating in the payment industry. However, if you go in other uh, other industry, maybe around India or China, you find a lot of fintech companies operating in other segments as well, like KYC, uh, micro lending, and all that. And also, the good example is the policy bazaar.com, which is selling, selling the insurance as well. So, how do you, uh, how, how do you see the fintech uh, in Nepal, especially in uh, other finances like the uh, insurance in the industry? I'm not an expert in fintechs, but uh, as an enthusiast, what I can tell you is, uh, I think we're in an initial state when it comes to fintech. We talked about China, Alipay, and financials, uh, they, have, they have been able to win, they onboarded that product for new power in just eight months time. They have 80 billion plus deposits. Clearly, the most successful deposit taking product in the world. There's no doubt. And at this point in time, I think they have more than 251 billion plus asset fund management, which is clearly bigger than any of the banks in the world. 
So Nepal had just been to FinTech. Now it has started from payment. As I told you, that the core utility that banks are providing are three. One is that payment ability, and the other is store value, and the final one is providing credit facilities. So now FinTech companies are already into first value which is obviously the payment, and it will always start from payment. If you talk about Yoba, when it started, they call it Yoba because it is uh, left over treasures. One fine day, probably, Alibaba would realize that we have a huge amount of money lying into our payment wallet, which is basically a payment portal. And then he suddenly came up with a product, and that was one of the most successful products uh, in mm -hmm. the world. So I think we've just started payment solution, and uh, FinTech disrupt, I'm a strong believer of uh, FinTech disruption. Yes, we have collaboration and everything going on, but at the same time, there is a disruption happening, happening because as a client, the kind of experience that I'm getting from the wallet is totally different than as, a, as, a, as a, when I go to bank branches and do all this from the access. I just, I just open up my mobile phone, I can do anything. And I think as millennials and centennials, the new generations are growing up, the fintechs will become for sure. That is, that there's no doubt, that's what I believe in. Uh, maybe uh, I have wrong understanding about that, but I believe firmly believe. Because it's very easy from customer's point of view, customer experience point of view. Now gradually, uh, maybe a regulation should open up. Now, if we talk about the transaction limit that we have is 1 lakh to 5,000 rupees, which is not, we won't be able to make uh, transactions with that sort of thing. Gradually, the regulator will open up. That has to come. There's no two way about it. And gradually, syntax will come into other platforms, peer to peer lending, lending, or other, other products that you're talking about. Maybe, I don't know uh, what is the time limit for that. It's just a matter of time, but eventually that will happen. That's what I believe. Thank you. Well, thank you, Mr. Chief, for that answer. Uh, this afternoon, on me, my, one of my friends was sharing me the inside story of uh, KCB uh, Bank from Kenya. He shared that there 88% of transactions are done out of the branch. Most of them are done through their agency banking channels and through other digital channels also. Uh, in Nepal, if you go into the agency banking uh, service, you will find that only wallet companies are allowed to run agency banking in metro areas where the most of the transaction happens. Uh, so definitely there, there are some regulatory constraints on that. So how, what, what should be a bank's approach to uh, digitize and, and going back to the KCB again, what they have posted is the, that transformation was only possible because of uh, their partnership is, uh, with one of the fintech companies from India itself. So they were praising on that again. So how do you see uh, uh, Sivar sir on that? Uh, do, we, do we have any potential of partnering with some fintech company which will transfer our entire transaction out of the branch at least to 80-90%? Do you think there is any possibility in Nepal? Uh, currently, uh, we did one uh, research in we came to know that somewhere around 92 types of transactions a customer does on a same account. From opening an account to the closure of accounts. So there are different 92 types of transactions. And we sat with the internal compliance team and the, we sat with the regulator, some regulators also. And what we came to know was like, uh, there were somewhere around 50 plus transactions where a customer needs to visit a branch and sign a document. And that has been mandated by the regulator. So we were very surprised, like, how do we put these transactions into the digital form? Because ultimately, if a customer has to visit a branch and sign a form, so I don't term that as a seamless digital transaction. So then, what, then the strategy that we tried to build up around that was, uh, like, how can we ask the regulator to ease these transactions? Then the regulators were bound by the other policies and procedures that the other government institutions have who accept those documents or who has to accept those uh, the transactions from the other end like tax payments or revenue collections <coughs> on that aspect. So that's one scenario where the current banking transactions are held uh, in terms of the entire banking infrastructure in the bank. And coming to your Collaborating with FinTech, uh, true, yes, uh, a bank cannot now at this time run the side of institution. We have to collaborate on any aspect with the FinTech, uh, whether that be on the payment side or on the other service areas. But 
it's seen like now banks, uh, the fintechs are competing with the banks on the types of services that they are providing. So now, <coughs> we even had a discussion with some of the fintechs like, I want to expose all your merchants into my mobile banking, what are your procedures? Can you act as a the merchant educator for us? So that we will expose all of them. And the question was, no, we will not. So the collaboration has to be from both ends, not on the other. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I'd like to just ask, we are in the digital world and we can definitely switch from English mode to Nepali mode anytime by tapping a single button in the mobile phone. So on that note, uh, what we have seen uh, in long past that earlier, even till 2013 also, uh, various banks used to collaborate with uh, each other for clearing their checks, you know, submitting one of the bank's checks to other and a lot of internal process manually done over the phone and the email and then giving back the money to the customer after maybe 30 minutes or one hour. And now at the time of uh, the digital disruption all, all the way around in the payment industry, especially with the partner like uh, Nepal Clearing House and they are some, one of the sophisticated product uh, ECC which is really uh, helping the banks a lot. Uh, why cannot we uh, do something again by collaborating between the banks itself? You know, we have run channels also for that. So, the collaboration uh, between the fintechs or between fintechs and banks, more it is necessary that uh, we need to collaborate with, between banks also. On that note, we can, again, we, we are seeing a lot of disruption being done by the fintech companies all around the world, in very, many, many, many industries. Uh, in terms of the there are any uh, possibility that some of the fintechs will come in Nepal and disturb some of the segment of banking right away. How do you see it? <coughs> First of all, uh, today is morning, I saw one of the news, Bible. And I, I was uh, disturbed with this uh, news because of uh, from last uh, one and a half years back, I had request uh, Russia uh, Bank uh, to introduce this Bible Bank in Nepal. But uh, I request, I sent a letter uh, to Russia Bank, but uh, they haven't uh, response in my uh, uh, letter. Then after uh, we went to uh, NTA, then NTA also uh, they haven't given a clear uh, picture on uh, this viral banking. So uh, definitely uh, in 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 developed country, as uh, there is uh, lots of uh, innovations happening. So uh, in my uh, context, uh, not only uh, we don't have a clear picture in you know uh, from the Russian Financial Bank to do uh, such kind of. Uh, 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 innovative and new technology in Nepal. I used to say that uh, first of all, uh, technology pila answer, this is the rules and regulation answer. So that's that's how I used to say. It. But as uh, of this this news have definitely uh, disrupt some of the banks who have already introduced this viral banking and uh, Facebook uh, banking uh, in terms of uh, messenger. So, technology is introduced first, then only after the regulation. So that's why I uh, I'm saying that not only in Nepal, uh, in all over the world, first of all technology will be introduced and then law and policy will be uh, introduced uh, uh, followed by. So, uh, Nepal, Russia, we play Adhubu Dilma, this viral banking, like one other thing, is Kati Bada Bank, like saying, disturb one. So our, they have already provided services to them. So if they block these uh, services, then what happens? Right, absolutely. And again, the news again strikes us um, on various aspects, like not just the Viber. Again, many banks have started using Facebook Messenger as their uh, preliminary, primitive chatbot services. So again, that will also make it with the similar regulation. 
And I must say, the Facebook Messenger chatbot that currently being used by uh, many banks are uh, fascinating in terms of their experience. Uh, they are reducing their call at the branch as well as their telemarketing centers. Uh, and with this type of news, we are definitely going to get a lot of soft on that. Uh, straight forward, I want to uh, move into the next topic that we are trying to cover here. Uh, the discussion on digitization cannot be completed without talking about the information security aspect. Uh, information security aspect, not just, not just uh, in terms of the uh, infrastructural security that we talk most, uh, most of the time about, rather than the end consumer's use, user behavior that, uh, that creates a lot of threat as well. So, how do we go for it? How Nepalese banks should go on uh, educating our customer about uh, the information security threat so that uh, so that it can be embraced, uh, the technology can be embraced by uh, all the consumer and can think about a lot uh, take more than just the uh, just a simple digitization in this country. I would like to ask about this to again to Sunil sir. Because of the uh, because of lack of awareness about the security, 
my mom and dad both use Facebook a lot. They are very much comfortable to use Gmail. They are very much aware about Skype chatting with my brother uh, a lot over the video call. But when I ask them to uh, get a mobile banking or uh, any wallet for, uh, for doing the recharge, they don't want to uh, get into that because they are scared about it. So the problem is only uh, the awareness side of the story and the right product like push payment system. Yeah. Uh, okay. Siva sir, want to uh, please. On the security of data, like, uh, I am sure like if you lose your wallet, you are more concerned about your money on the wallet rather than the other documents as your license or cards on the wallet. So if you see, the, I've been a security pro professional for the last uh, three and a half years uh, in a bank. And the, the, what I found on that aspect was uh, the security was more focused on transfer of funds from one account to another account rather than the security of data, which we term as PII, personally and private information, was less of a concern to most of the banks uh, in the context of Nepal. So if there is a transfer of funds from one account to another account, by any means of breach or any thing, then that is a concern, a huge concern, but if there is a breach and there is a transfer of customer data, not financial, but uh, non-financial data, then that is not of a concern for us. Because uh, we are more concerned with the money that we have in our accounts or the, uh, the transactions that we do rather than, both the data are equally important for us. In terms of security, but the culture that we are brought up in is that we are not more concerned with the non financial data but concerned with the financial data in terms of uh, risk. Right. Uh, on that note, I would like to uh, open the floor for audience to ask questions if they have any, and the language is not a barrier. Just a short note, I know. Experts are the super answer, the new software answer, or audience particularly because they answer the new sound, they are most welcome on that. Mike, use your answer also, the mic is. Yeah. Sanjeev Tai wants to answer on that, I'm sure. <laughs> In every conference we get some people thinking, you know, I, what I call is outside of the box, not focusing on the agenda, but, you know, focusing outside, which we do not have control over. So, you want to talk about Hukama, so, it's called like KYC, so like we have had a problem before where people from outside, when they are hungry, they know the conference here, they want to come and eat. So, we had to introduce this paper because it was not accepting the digital. But if you, uh, if you notice, you know, like uh, this one, we try to send them by uh, like uh, an email order, but then it goes to your HR and we hope they had already sent to you. But the feedback form is here on the QR again, like you know. So we are also trying to improve on as much as we can. So questions as you relate, we have again gone to this slide. So we try to, you know, uh, bring as much as we can over the, like you know, uh, next program. So thank you for that feedback. So I guess this is the only question, yeah? Yeah? Okay. Hello. Uh, thank you, panel members. And thank you to speakers uh, for their value addition, value addition today. Um, my question, or uh, rather the topic that I'd uh, like the panel to discuss upon is uh, resistance to change, or rather even considering change. Because most of the time, uh, when you think about digitalizing or changing or uh, new innovations, the first thing that the first challenge that we need to face is making the top level management even consider the change, right? Uh, not just for us, but also for the banks. Uh, as our becomes our uh, right to put uh, for banks, even uh, Rashtra Bank is not considering the change that the banks are initiating. And there is uh, one really misused phrase that innovation everywhere else leads to uh, better productivity, less cost, but innovation in banking leads to jail. <laughs> uh, uh, one thing is that you know, making people consider change, and the other thing is once the change happens, making uh, the uh, sales level staff or the people who needs, uh, needs to use uh, those changes 
uh, breaking the barrier of the, their resistance. Skills. So I'd like the panel to discuss on, on, on that question. I want to pass the question right away to uh, Nirajan being the uh, already in the uh, senior management in this company, sir. I was willing to uh, take this question. And I think if you pointed out the right thing, uh, the most challenging factor that we have when it comes to digital IT is the legacy system that we have. And you pointed the right thing. We have been doing certain things in banking for decades. Now we have to change from X to Y, which is a dynamic, which is disruptive, right? And uh, which is not tested. So change is really difficult because of the legacy system that we have. And we have been doing this for 10 years and 20 years. So how can we just move into another thing? So that thought process has to be built from all the management, especially it boils down from the top, I agree with you, until the senior management realizes the fact that we need to move on to this and that, nothing is going to happen. And uh, another factor that we need is empathy, I think. What I think is not relevant, what clients think is relevant, what my experience may not be relevant, what clients experience is relevant. I am too much uh, believing in the fact that FinTech is disrupting because I do not know much about FinTech. I have read quite a few books and articles, nothing more than that, I am not an expert. But as a client, I find it so comfortable. I don't really want to go to a bank and, and uh, get into queue and use that kiosk machine and ATM machine. I don't want to do that. When, we don't, I, when I don't have that channel, then definitely I go to ATM machine because I don't have other options. So, empathy is important. What kind of behavior, again, okay, Probably I represent millennials, so my thought process could be a little different, but I firmly believe that there's a disruption happening, and we might have, today I think there's uh, just one of the news coming up in one of the online uh, news portal, they have banned Alipay transactions over here in Nepal. I think this is one of the good news, because they have to get into the administrative system of the country before a very capacity, but we can't just block it. The power is so big that one day or the other this will come. How long is it going to take? So if you really want to embrace the change and if, you, if we want to get ready for the change which is coming up and we want to sustain this industry, I think we have to embrace it and we have to act as soon as possible. That's what I think. Uh, I have a tough time to convince uh, Mancom member and board uh, giving my uh, ISO. My ISO is really it's very difficult to do convince uh, to get uh, new technology plus security uh, expect uh, on uh, to purchase uh, security uh, firewalls and uh, web. So at that time, uh, I convinced with you know uh, for Mancom that uh, if we didn't purchase. Then after uh, the pain process, the firewall and then the wife and other stuff uh, in the pain. So it's tough time to convince in man mankind. And they al al always think about you know uh, return of investment. So, if we put this uh, parallel, then uh, we will get uh, original of interest on it. <laughs> so it's, not, it's very hard to answer that question. So if uh, the bank loan member of the ITCB buyer is it's more easy to convince them, then it's very difficult. Uh, so some only only incident by taking some money, then after uh, we had uh, you know I have to some answer. Exactly, it's a matter of discussion. You must mainly your technology investment, man. So as a like you know, IT professional, or like digital professional, or as a line manager, I'm convincing like you know people with the approving authority. That's a so like what are the what's the general experience here? Or anybody would like from the audience would like to share? He or actually I he don't need board some of you know board such. Then such a like some of you know board name, right? So the answer is only about your convincing or like it's only. Costo sir, cases, win cases, a room fee sir. So any people any number you like to get a sign, I see people are driving like sir, then the fully in cases and fees. Ah, it's context for people are like it is even ah, on the telephone, I'm here. Ah, my number comes now that it is a bit more investment than first priority also. And this was he ah, on the two program program that he board me answer. The 
technology is not the same as the investment. Even though we procure Finagal, we have to take a look at Finagal, but Finagal is a very cost coordinating cost. So that to on a competitive level, even Finagal is a very good thing. Even Nepal is a very good thing. It's a robust system, but it's a very good time and again, upgrade what they go to by saying. Finagal or the recording system or all that was there. But in the context of the program, it's like, 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 it's easy to convince them, and even the board, otherwise it's very difficult to convince. Yes, I'm very aware of the auto-concern, I'm very aware of the auto-model, I'm very aware of the investment, or you're saying, OPEX must be CAPEX must be. Somehow there is an OPEX, उन्हें वो जो ओपेक्स में नहीं हैं उनसे तब कहते हैं चीजें तब वो कैरेक्स में होते हैं तेरे अब मतलब रिटर्न ऑफ इन्वेस्टमेंट को ये एक ही वो बने जे ओपेक्स में जे हैं लाइक फाइव डॉलर्स तब वन टाइम इन्वेस्टमेंट को पूरा करने होगा जे इट्स यूज़ ऑफ़ वन ऑफ़ इन्वेस्टमेंट सो ओपेक्स इस They are not from the background where we are. Uh, it's, it, it takes a lot of time to convince like why, when, how, what are the impacts, what are we going to get. And obviously in any technical investment that uh, organization does, uh, there are no direct uh, revenues being generated from that. There are always indirect revenues as in from the investment that you do in any IT or any digital investments. So it takes time for them to understand. You have to convince them, you have to... What I do on my aspect is I, I forward a lot of articles, a lot of documents, a lot of um, papers that I get in my email to my board or to my senior manager, read this, this is what. And thanks to us, like we, uh, the, uh, we have the representation of the, uh, one, uh, the IT help in our manform. So it's easy for us to convince, uh, so that we can align the ahead of IT to move into the same direction where we wanted to move. So it's easy for us, but not uh, might not be the same for all banks. So what I think is like in that case, what the, bank, the person who is sitting on the other side of the table as head of IT or head of digital banking has to keep on forwarding these uh, articles, these um, documents. Uh, most of them are on LinkedIn or Facebook. Start sharing the documents. Think, uh, this is really smart, you know, like video case. Right? Yeah. Video case. <laughs> create a circle of influence around you yes. and keep pushing the agenda, don't give up. I think that's what you can do. Yes. You know, say. I think that's a very good response. So I think probably you are trying to say. Yeah. Uh, if you are finding, uh, you know, hard time convincing your management on the huge investment in a particular project, uh, you can create a miniature version of that huge investment, run that show for a while. If it clicks, then go for a big investment. Like one of the architects of our digitization, uh, the NIC is here, digitization journey is in the audience right now. One is the key of the matter, simple process flows, the same bank, the CAM works up, the Buddha's architect work up. Now, when you give a record, based on that, we are getting such a huge return on investment, that if you have a larger infrastructure, you can get a lot of better return on investment. सबसे मने हाँ तो एंडलेर के लाइसेंसिंग वाले ना इन्हें सीसीए बैंक इस मूविंग इनटू मोर इन्वेस्टमेंट इन डिजिटाइजेशन अब सीआरएम को करा है अब एक दम मॉबल सॉल्यूशन हो बना है उसका नॉर्मल हो अन्य यू फाइंड दी लीड मैनेजमेंट का सॉल्यूशन नॉर्मल मार्केटिंग मैनेजमेंट ईमेल पुस्ट हमें मैन पावर तो एफर्ट रिड्यूस होने थाले थाले होते हैं अब वो ना मोर इंटीग्रेटेड सॉल्यूशन सोचते हैं अभी तो कोई साफ़ सोचा रखी ना लाये मैनेजमेंट लाइक कंपनी सोचा रखी है इजी होता है सो इफ समबडी इस फाइंडिंग हार्ड टू कन्विंस मैनेजमेंट ऑन इन्वेस्टिंग यूथ स्टार्ट फ्रॉम अ मिनिएचर व and in payment industry, most of the bank, I guess, are working in the OPEX model. I don't know, supply them already, prior, per user to model map, to never have software companies on the same, mobile banking, so on. And that is a huge success story again in the Nepal. 
in the banking school, uh, in the banking uh, industry. So, this is like an digital infrastructure ma continue on like the Kelly Rocha. So, I'll get the two side borders of social services last time. And that's actually related to you, not to us. <laughs> yeah, the question from Sam, Sam Lamishani, a very good friend of mine. Do you consider ATM as one of the supportive channels to promote digitization or one of the barriers to promote digitization as it is only used to dispense cash? Yeah, please. ATM is a channel. It's not, I mean, it's not a machine that only dispenses cash. We have made it so dumb only to dispense cash. So if you see the ATMs that are there in India, you can open an ATM account from an ATM machine. You can transfer funds from an ATM machine. You can do bill payments from an ATM machine. It's just that our infrastructure has made that machine done. So it's just a channel. Another channel like a mobile banking, a mobile device or an internet device or a tap. It's just another channel that you can, you can just deploy your entire mobile application onto an ATM channel. So it's just the infrastructure that we have built it as a dump machine. Where you just insert a card and dispense cash. But if your system supports, if your switch supports, you can do a lot of things from the ATM machine, from opening an FDA account to uh, not only opening an FDA account, you can uh, ask the service request, your banking service request from the ATM machine as well. I want to have a checkbook, I can just directly do a checkbook request from the ATM machine. Okay, but what are you interested in? I have a different thought. Okay. Ask <laughs> if ATM is cost. I am working, uh, I have been working with the bank uh, last 15 years. ATM is cost. Uh, one of the features I have been working with is the usual uh, features. But in that way, we have already had uh, mobile, uh, mobile in our hand. Uh, rather than to, uh, you know, uh, focusing in ATM, expanding and ex ATM, uh, we can focus with uh, mobile banking. So, uh, ATM, I can help you with this cost. But if you have a technology like Steve Gordon, you can technology like this. I don't know if you have a new one. You can already have a new one. You can 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 have a new one. I think you have a solution for dispensing.
vertical the same vertical ID. All right, um, my, I'm coming to my last curiosity here. Uh, what can I really discuss in uh, like, I think we've done excellent work when it comes to launching a product. I know mobile banking go, I think internet banking go, I mean, you know, there are very different So, I don't know what's the name, I like online banking, you know, you know, but in terms of subscription, the rate is going up, but in terms of usage for, like, you know, I am a subscriber of mobile bank or online banking, but I am not using the services as frequently as I should be. So, why do you have to say, what is the challenge? So, why do you have to say, Oh, 
जबकि भाटपटनी को कमर में चाहिए तब को डेबिट कार्ड एक्सेप्ट होता है मानी चाहिए कैस चाहिए भाटपटी सपिंग करना एटीएम गए पैसा निल भाटपटी को कंट्रोल में गए कैस दिख तर उसे यूथ कार्ड यूज कर सकते कैस को सत्ता एटीएम में गए तो मैं भर अब यह कल्चरल स्टेट माइंड स्टेट एड कर आज को मिट्टीसम यदि हमें कुछ सरकारी संस्था जो क्यूआर कोड पर पेमेंट कर टैक्स अफिश के निगरानी कर क्यूआर पेमेंट भी करो एक्सपेक्ट अच्छे भोलि कुने आइए हो कि इट्स वेरी डिफिकल्ट फर अस टू कंटेन्स बिकज वी आर स्टिल इन अ वेरी कैश सेंसिटिव सोसाइटी कैश फर अस जी हम डिफ्रेंट पेमेंट सीस्टम स्टिल प्रिफर मोर कैश दैन चांस So, uh, strategically, if you see, like uh, the entire ecosystem has to be built. Like financial inclusion, we put a lot of money. Branches like we put a lot of money. QR code payment, we put a lot of money. So, uh, some of the entire ecosystem of financial inclusion is not built. These are just fringe payment mechanisms that we are providing. So, I think you are talking about mainly how to incentivize yes. uh, you know, inclusion. Huh? So, if I as a your saving bank account do not order a check book. Is to use your other channel, then I must be. Not only that, what I mean, what I add to this. So what I think is like, uh, even if I get the, uh, just to give an example, say I am a merchant, I have a QR code place, but to make my payments to my school again, I have to check out cash. Right. So it's better I carry cash rather than carry the postal card again with no cash. There is two options. One is bottom up approach. गवर्नमेंट ने सीधे तब क्यूआर कोड पर पेमेंट करने सीस्टम डेवलप भाषा इस प्रकार ने पेमेंट करने आयो डेफिनेट इज गोज एकदम आर हेड तर अगर बटम अफ अपोज भैर इवन दो इवन बैंक इंडिविजुअल बैंक इनिशिएसन कर गो कारण मेटलाइज भाषा होना तो गवर्नमेंट ने डिजिटल नेपाल तब Is a visa, master, whatever card you are carrying. Always there is anxiety. What's going to happen? Because whether this my card is going to be approved or not, so there will be some transactions. Because these all are good transactions te technically if you want to talk. But if you use your wallet, honestly, because I will use it both, I'll feel much more comfortable using wallet. I'll ask the restaurant, do you have a QR code? I'll pay by using wallet. Then giving the card. Because my confidence level is very high, because I can see internet is there. It's a push button, I'm pushing it. And second thing is the commission body to look at. There are not too many parties like the parts because I have to pay something to visa, and the merchants end up being charged like three percent or half percent like that. And you are getting the money instantly. So these are the selling points of the QR codes. And for the merchant acquisition is as easy as A B C. You don't have to fill up the big forms. Nothing. Ask them to download your apps. Ask them to download your apps. Start doing your business. You don't have to do anything. It's that easy. Then you do your QIC. What yeah. you're implying is like it's very user friendly. friendly. Very much user friendly. Right. Okay. Because I've seen this, so I'm just sharing this experience. This is that easy. That's that's the reason what happened on PayTM. Otherwise, how can they have that kind of merchants overnight? Yeah. They made it that simple. So we have to understand this. So you are in the future. Definitely, these are masters. The transaction has been declining. Now they are moving to the QR two. That will be there. Okay. So the future is for the QR. Is there yeah. any process to verify the bank number independently, automatically? No. I mean that would have been really perfect uh, in this case. They would download the app and the bank number of the merchant is verified. That is QRC. <laughs> I think uh, that's a great uh, point. So with that note, uh, yeah.
over here. So you are a no, I mean, both are questions that I will answer. But I just have a very basic question. This, you know, there's always a debate between fintech and banks. Obviously, this debate is happening everywhere in the world, including our country. But I think in India, what's happening, we understood, uh, we passed that to a certain extent, now we started collaborating, to be very candid. But to me, the classical debate is, uh, you know, is the mindset issue that banks have. And I'm, I've been in a bank myself, apologies for sounding rude. So when you start a fintech, right, first of all, they are not expected <coughs> in ROI within the first three years, four years, five years. They have VC money or wherever they're getting funded from. So if you look at the payment industry, whether 2% discount, 3% MDI, whatever, even those payment companies in the first three, four years don't make money. I think the bank has a mindset and in year one they want to make money. And if you look at it again, right? When I went to a corner tea store, had 200 rupee transaction, had some tea and a cross. They didn't accept cards. Most likely, you know, next year if I'm here, some fintech company would have made a merchant, whether QR or whatever it is, right? Now the same uh, fintech company, with that only relationship with that merchant, is able to afford him an onboard. But a bank who will not only get a merchant relationship, will get his bank account, will fund his, uh, you know, give him education loan for his kid, give him forex, etc. They are not able to earn money. So I don't know, is it the bank expect ROI money or two years and they are not ready to wait for those four or five years that a fintech is able to? Is that the mindset that is causing all the issues and fintechs are able to go ahead and banks are where they are? I don't know, that's a question to you. So, 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 Give another example of collaboration. So, as you know, in India, the small finance banks were given the license and also the something called payment banks. Uh, payment bank, uh, Paytm, which is now a payment bank. Uh, payment banks, uh, though it's a bank, are not allowed to lend. And even their deposits, they cannot hold more than 1 lakh at the end of the day. Uh, further, uh, they can only invest in uh, government bonds. and So, there are very lot, a lot of restrictions on how a payment bank can operate. So, payment banks uh, do get customers, even current accounts or uh, business accounts, where the balances go above one bank and they cannot hold it. So, what do they do? They have to ask it somewhere. Uh, for whatever reason, many banks in the country are not uh, keen on that kind of a collaboration. It so happens that Sohude uh, has a tie of three payment banks and their balances above one lakh comes to us. So, we create a bill account. I am saying that this is an example of collaboration because we went into it. Not knowing what we are going to get as the ROI, we didn't look at it as ROI. In fact, for all the balances which come, we pay a fee to them, right? Because the balance is very good. So we actually pay out, but we believe that over a period of time, this could evolve into a larger partnership because they have a reach. Paytm has thousands of merchants on it. Their debt payment plan has lakhs of merchants all over the place. We don't know what's in the So when we tie up the fees, we do it because potentially it creates an ecosystem and it could benefit you sometime in the future. Not going in for ROI, uh, we may be interested to uh, get of our infrastructure, time, resources and everything, but potentially that's not the case. Uh, Alright, any thoughts on that? Okay, then let us uh, hit something on this. In fact, the banks should be looking at ROI for this kind of transition, honestly, if you ask me. Because the bank's business is you're getting a data. You monetize the data. You will have fantastic power out of this. And it all boils down how you're going to put up your proposal to your senior management. My experience in Nepal, if you talk about digital banking or whatever, they'll come with too much of technical aspects. And these people sitting in the management levels, they, they, they don't have any clue what they're talking about. If you start talking about monetizing the data, user experience, Believe me, all the banks in Nepal are ready to invest in this segment. This is what I feel. And this is what I feel that the future is. We have to monetize the data. It's not by, okay, 200 transactions, I'm getting one rupee. Okay. If I'm doing, going to do that, it's not going to happen. That's the philosophy of the tech grants. Yeah, so